welcome to the video. As you can see from the fez, it's Christmas. I don't have a Christmas hat or even a white beard, though I could easily grow one if I wanted to and had the time, but I don't. For those of you who don't know, I used to put on music in pubs during the pub rock era, and this is about Christmas at that time in those pubs. Hang on, it's not very comfortable, but let's get on with this. This is about Christmas in pub rock, which may seem a very, um, hmm, slotty near slutting a square peg into a round hole, but basically I'm just going to talk about what it was like in the pub rock world at Christmas. Last Christmas I gave you my heart, but the very next day you threw it away. This year I'm not going to get you anything at all. First of all, we always tried to cheer people up and have um, festive things and put the decorations up and try and persuade people like Steve Marriott. I want you to know I love you, baby. I want you to know I care. And Gino at Washington. <laughs> to have a Christmas show, which wasn't always easy and normally it just consisted of them saying that Merry Christmas at the end. Well, uh... It's the holiday season and Santa is checking his list to see who is naughty or nice and I'm kind of feeling guilty. New Year's Eve was the big one. Well, it was then, I think. The last few I tried to do, even like 10 or 15 years ago, were a complete waste of time. I've always been doing stuff for people our age, whether I was 21 or whether I was 69. And people our age, when you get past about 50 odd, often don't want to go out on New Year's Eve. But this isn't about New Year's Eve, Hogmanay. This is about Christmas. Right, so we used to try and persuade the ex to do a Christmas show. We used to do special flyers and things. The best Christmases we had, I can remember Jonah Louie when he was in Brett Marvin and the Thunderbolts. We left to London where it's hot. We're heading for a favourite spot Down on the coast We pass the town of Crawley And then the Jive Bombers He was the guy that wrote the hit for Brett Marvin and the Thunderbolt Seaside Shuffle Which obviously wasn't a Christmas hit But Stop the Cavalry was a Christmas hit Although it wasn't written as a Christmas hit And it just happened that Sif Records One of the best marketing people ever Decided to, to promote it as a Christmas record And lo and behold In those days you could do things like that Now I'm not so sure I can also remember another very vibrant Christmas memory was the Pogues. I put the Pogues on, it's a bit long story, I think I've mentioned this in another video, but just to recap, I put the Pogues on a few times. I basically found them busking in Hammersmith. They'd already played shows. They don't think I just found them and made them stars, but they hadn't really played big shows. And I put them on at the Roby. I thought Tuesday, but everybody says it was Wednesday. And who am I to argue with everybody? And so we put them on a Wednesday residency because we wanted to build up an audience. But it was just the right time. Lo and behold, from the first one, it was absolutely rammed. It just got more and more rammed. And in the end, we had to stop because the Roby, I don't know if you recall, was on a corner of a busy junction. Opposite the rainbow, which was by then was a church, and the police weren't very keen on the fact that people who couldn't get into the pub were spilling out into the road and disrupting traffic. You see, they're so they're so finicky, aren't they? The police, a small thing like that, and they asked us to stop doing it. Actually, they told Malcolm, who was the landlord, to stop. So we stopped. But what's that got to do with Christmas? I hear you ask. So happy Christmas. Brennan, who was the manager owner of Rock On, Rec not a Rock On, it was on Rock's Off or something. Anyway, a record shop in Hanway Street, whose name I can't remember. JB's, was it? Could have been JB's. He was the manager there and he didn't, and he knew that he, he wasn't really the man to take the pokes forward. And being an arrogant git, me, I thought I was. So I put myself up for being the manager. It was reasonably close, I think, but the man who was much more suited was Frank Murray. He got the job. But then, because I'd done a lot of work with them and built them up and helped them in their career, Frank said, look, I tell you what, we'll pay you off in effect. We'll do a week for you at the Cricketers. And that happened to be in the late autumn of, I think it was 1983. 
But anyway, the Christmas memory comes from... When you first took my hand on a cold Christmas Eve You promised me Broadway was waiting for me And Shane McGowan, um, I wouldn't say he was a regular, but from time to time he would turn up and come for a drink and watch a band at the Cricketers. And I can remember, I wasn't there because I'd gone home to see my parents in West East Wales, and apparently he turned up, this is in 1987, which is obviously a bit late, and it was when Fairy Tale of New York was shooting at the charts, it was being played everywhere, Radio 1 or whatever, and it was going to be a huge Christmas hit, as we know and as we knew, and he was absolutely skinned, and he went to the Cricketers and borrowed 50 quid off the landlord. There you are, see, that's an interesting story that no one else will tell you. Yes. This is the first Christmas that Shane won't be here. Kirsty left us a few years ago, so RIP Shane and Kirsty. With me, babe, I put down with my own. Can't make it alone. I built my dreams around. I'd just like to say, if you're watching this and you're enjoying yourself a teeny bit, Please like this video, please subscribe, comment, let me know what you think. I genuinely do like to hear what people think about my video. Don't be too cruel, because I, you know, I get very upset and I cry. Back to Christmas in pub rock. Apart from that, my Christmas memories, and apart from doing Christmas shows with Gino Washington and Steve Marriott and Wilco Johnson, who refused to literally do anything that wasn't in his set, just like that. I can almost hear those sleigh bells now, because Christmas is really fantastic. Melissa, who was a friend of Rebecca, who worked for me, she was in contact with Frank Sidebottom, who's just starting up. Chris CV, if you don't know, I've done a video about it. There'll be a link up there somewhere or in the description. And he started this character called Frank Sidebottom. He loved Christmas. Chris and Frank both loved Christmas, absolutely loved it. And he would spend hours and days doing Christmas songs. Let's have some fantastic Christmas music that goes like this. Oh, oh, oh. I don't know how to work his, his keyboard at all, actually. <laughs> Even though I brought it in one Christmas. Oh, let's all, oh, no, that's wrong, is it? Oh, let's all sing the Christmas medley. Switch up the hi-fi, switch up the TV. Doing artwork and special Christmas hats and things. And so we had quite a few Frank Sidebottom Christmas specials because the cricketers, when I was there, which was by the Oval Cricket Ground, by the way, I was there from 83 to 1990 when we were kicked out because the brewery put the rent, I think wanted to double the rent and the landlord wasn't paid to pay. And so we went off and, and a load of bikers took it over. And then eventually they tried to um, firebomb the place to claim the insurance. But that's another story which I've talked about in another video, so let's not go there. We're talking about Christmas. This isn't very Christmas, is it? Throwing firebombs into your own pub to destroy the PI she can claim on the insurance. No, it's not very Christmassy. And so let's stop there, because I don't want to spoil your Christmas. Thank you for watching. Please watch my videos. Please subscribe. Please let me know what you think by commenting. And thank you very much for watching. Merry Christmas, goodbye. And if you're watching this in May, sorry about the Christmassy stuff. Oh, hang on a minute. I'll put on my Christmas hat. Ho, 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 Merry Christmas to you all. <laughs> oh, Christmas is really fantastic. Yes, it's my firm favorite day. That is the giving and receiving of gifts. I just wouldn't have it any other way. Oh, Christmas is really fantastic. Yes, it's a fabulous time of year. Did you know Christmas is better than Easter? Oh, it's the greatest time of year. Don't you know that Christmas is fantastic in the morning? And Christmas is fantastic in the evening.